right. I have 632. I'll call the housing committee meeting to order. Um, again, Hannah, I'm going to hand it back to you because I don't have the agenda in front of me yet. Yeah, um, I think the first item is approving past minutes. Gosh, I'm not even set up to be able to see everyone in the screen. I'm going to have to change my view. Okay. Um, would you vote. like me to share Do the you, minutes can you, on the screen? Well, you know, all I was going to say was if everyone had a chance to read them, just to make sure I was going to get a hand vote, but I'll ask instead for a voice vote for people to approve the minutes from last meeting. Um, let's do a roll call vote. Brant? Uh, I approve, yes. Catherine? I'm abstaining because I was not here. Okay, Fred? Yes, approve. Montserrat? Aye. And Eli, you weren't here, so um, you can abstain from the vote. Um, I have a quick point. Um, I received a note saying that I had been appointed but not sworn in yet. Do I have any voting um, eligibility Ooh. in this meeting? Ooh. Now we all get to swear at you now. Ah. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Sorry. <laughs> Next time. Good to know. Um, great. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Um, summary of survey results. Hannah, yeah, would it be okay if we do the introduction so, since Elijah's new and I don't know if everyone knows it, everybody? That sounds great. <laughs> um, Super. Sorry, I, I can go first. I'm Hannah Davis. I work for the town of Waitley. Um, I'm the community development administrator. Um, should I call names? Would that be easiest? Does it, anybody you know what, Hannah? It, I think it would be... Um, yeah, because the multitasking when I have to scroll around at people would just be better. If I would have set my screen up ahead of time, I probably could have gotten it, but. No, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, Brant? I'm Brant Chaikis. I'm a member of the Waitley Planning Board. Fred? Uh, Fred Rolowski. I'm a, been a member of the Housing Committee for quite a few years also uh, on the Board of Assessors and Alternate for the ZBA. Monty? I'm a conservation commissioner and I'm just temporarily on the housing committee for this project. Um, Eli? Hi, I'm um, Elijah Snow Rackley. I recently moved to Waitley um, this year. Um, I have a strong interest in housing justice and I used to work for a community land trust in Ohio with a similar uh, size population uh, in a rural community. So I'm excited to be involved. Oh. I'm so glad you're here. Um, Catherine? Hi, I'm Catherine Wolkowitz. I have been on the housing committee since inception. I am also on the community preservation committee and I live in Waitley near uh, the town center. Megan? Uh, yes, I'm Megan Rhodes. I'm a senior planner at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And Tasman? Hi, I'm Tamsin Flanders. I um, work with Megan at um, the FERCOG as a land use and natural resources planner. Awesome. And I think I'm up next. Yep, so Tamsin's got the survey results. So if everyone recalls um, at our last meeting in the spring, we approved a final survey um, to distribute to the town in a variety of methods, online and paper copy. We had flyers distributed. Um, and over that time from April till now, um, we've gotten some results that Tamsin is going to uh, summarize for us. Can you share? I can't you share yet, Hannah, if you're able to share the presentation or give me hosting. You should be able to now. All right, um, everyone seeing my screen? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, you wanna put it in slideshow mode? Sure, yeah. Um, so the, <clears throat> um, this first page gives us a, a look at who took the survey. Um, that's important for considering how we um, see bias or not in our results. 
Um, so I, I'm not gonna read out all the age, owner, renting, and housing type, but I will just tell you where um, it's close or not close. So the, um, the age demographic, the age breakdown was actually quite close to the um, existing demographics in Waitley. Um, there was a little bit of a low representation of renters among survey takers because renters, according to the census, which isn't um, is to be taken with a grain of salt because it is an estimate, but renters are, um, constitute 16% of Waitley um, housing units, occupied housing units, according to the census. And then um, the 90% single family respondents was spot on. Um, the census has 7% um, of res residents living in duplexes. And then according to the census there, and I think what we've um, gathered from our research, there are no multifamily, uh, no, I'm forgetting. Yeah, there's a, the, um, it's, this census says there's zero multifamily units in Waitley, but um, we should discuss that if um, we think we, ha we can identify some. Um, so the um, <clears throat> majority of respondents were, uh, had incomes in um, higher ranges that correlates pretty well to the existing um, profile of Waitley residents. Um, the owner costs, I, I guess I don't um, know. I didn't great, get a great comparison for that. So um, you, you probably have a stronger reaction that, to that slide than I, to that um, graphic than I do. And then, um, the over seven, or nearly 80% of residents um, found their housing to feel affordable, um, but that leaves 15% feeling like their housing was unaffordable. I mean, somewhat unaffordable. And then um, uh, many, and, and <clears throat> I'm sorry, you guys, I'm <clears throat> not feeling very well and struggling through this. Um, um, some respondents said that their housing was a strain and unaffordable. Um, so most Wheatley residents don't plan to move. Um, and I think that we asked that question because we were interested in whether um, housing was sort of squeezing people out of town. Um, but there is a around 20% that are thinking about um, leaving their existing house. Um, needing to downsize there's we didn't get a because we didn't get a lot of respondents talking about how their plan to move I don't um, we don't have like great um, sort of data on what those reasons are um, the breakdown was sort of spread out um, well distributed across the reasons that we provided um, but respondents did not say that they need to upsize they did not say they need more handicap accessible housing um, they did not say they need better access to transit or um, employment. And nobody said that the cost of living in Whaley was too high. Um, the preferences that came through for housing, new housing in Whaley um, were small homes for seniors to downsize, starter homes for first time home buyers, and um, accessory apartments. Um, these questions. Um, so this question shows that not a strong um, percent of the respondents um, thought that we needed like a lot of new single family homes or duplex, two family homes or um, market rate ap apartments. And the reason I circled that fourth, sorry, that fifth response is that when you combine the high need and the medium need um, response rate, um, these, so the green and the blue bar, these three circled in red were sort of the highest scoring as far as like just simple need. Um, the, <clears throat> um, again, uh, I did a similar thing here where you can see what, what how these um, responses were ordered and, and um, as far as what was most highly supported but also the creation of new neighborhoods or subdivisions within housing that is clustered together 
um, when people when you look at highly support and somewhat support together, um, that was the second most popular um, preference for housing. And so the first was reuse of existing buildings and town owned properties. Um, and this question was a um, asked sort of strategically what or sorry sort of where no not where. Um, what kinds of changes to how we produce and zone for housing um, would would residents prefer? So um, offering housing rehabilitation loans um, and providing resources for homeowners to address health, safety, and energy efficient upgrades um, was the most popular. Repurs repurposing existing housing for town or town properties for affordable housing, amending zoning to promote affordable housing and then purchasing land for the purpose of affordable housing development. Um, using community preservation funds to help first time home buyers purchase homes or to use commu using community preservation funds to provide rental assistance um, were, did not rank high, neither did increasing housing density in places where suitable. And that's the survey. Hi, uh, this is Brandt. I You kind of flipped through some slides that had some other comments and, you know, didn't really, I'm just wondering yeah. if you have a sort of a summary of all the other comments. I saw that in reading the draft, none of those were included in the draft. So, and I just, you know, a couple of them stuck out at me as you went by, but. What could you say about those? Um, I th that there wasn't a lot of consensus um, and I would love to provide, just send you the slides and have you take a look. Um, I was unless Megan- Comments you about too many people apparently moving into Waitley. And I think that means you, Elijah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, first I've ever heard of that sort of concern. No, th this was all based on what, 49 responses? So how many we got? I thought it was 47. 47, okay. Is, is that, I don't want to know if we use the term statistically valid and it, or is that just a, I know one time snapshot that doesn't really reflect the, the, the town. Uh, how do you how do you deal with so low a response and then try to develop something based on that? That's a tricky question. So I think um, the South County Senior Center did a survey just before ours. And I think because they were very similar topics, I think a lot of respondents thought they'd already filled it out and decided not to respond to ours. We did take a look at the South County Senior um, Survey to see if those results kind of jived with ours. Um, they were fairly similar, at least looking from the senior population. Um, but it is it is tricky. That's an issue we're going to have to wrestle with. So we did try. So we distributed them at the um, special town meeting. We did elections, um, the parade. We also it went through the um, the Waitley Scoop, the newspaper newsletter. It was on social media and the website that we definitely, if you could think of other ways to reach out more, we certainly did try. Um, I don't know how much more productive it would be, how much more we'd get. Can I make a comment um, to that point? I think it's really valuable to get the feedback from people, but an, another, it's also valuable to allow people to give feedback and we have allowed that. You know, it's not like people like we're making decisions without giving anyone a chance to weigh in. So, and I will say, just keeping in mind the overview of what this is going to do is we're going to create a housing production plan that's going to recommend ways to diversify the housing stock in Waitley to increase housing units, but particularly affordable housing units. And the final product is basically going to have a table at the very end with a whole list of menus and item like options on ways to do it. It's not gonna say you have to do this. This is then, like a, it's a menu basically for the select board, planning board, CPA, the town officials to decide 
which ones they want to go after first, which ones they want to pick and choose and, and try to implement. So nothing is prescribed and regulated based on this plan. It is basically, here's what we think we heard. It should be the priorities and here are options that the town could pursue based on its current zoning, its infrastructure, things like that. Um, so, you know, we're not, we're not saying the town is going to uh, allow multifamily by right and it's going to be everywhere um you know against the people's wishes that it could be an option i doubt it but it could be um so it, it's nothing nothing's written in stone based on this plan and so will the housing production plan not directly really incorporate like a couple of those graphs where tasman was sort of showing that line it to me the numbers were so close that you know she had circled a few with skip a few in the middle like i don't know that you can state preference based on any of those because it was such a small number and so close together right like you can't really right so what the what the housing production plan the state requires us to do is basically create a like this menu of options on ways to increase affordable housing and just provide housing in general and it will say please prioritize which ones the town thinks is most important to do over the next you know to tackle the next five years and so the committee that's up to the committee the committee can say here's what our choices are um, yeah. based on this limited survey input our sense of the town and knowing that this plan is going to have to be approved by the planning board and the select board so it's going to have to be politically feasible options that you think you'll be able to get the support from planning board and select board from yeah. um but you know it, there's it's going to be a, a whole host of factors that are going to go into that prioritization but it doesn't have you know say you say this one thing is our number one priority there's nothing that says you, know, you don't get dinged if you don't actually end up pursuing that as your first priority over the next five years. Okay. Of the 47 responses, I'm just curious, how many were uh, by email and, and then how many in hard copy? Or were they all on email? They were mostly on the electronic surveys. I don't remember too many hard copies. There were a few maybe. Yeah, we received a few hard copies at town elections, but with the exception of those, it was, I think, all electronic. But is, is that make it more difficult, I guess, say for older people to respond? If you're doing it electronic, I mean, you're assuming everybody has equal access to computers and the internet. Uh, well, I believe we made the hard copies available at the libraries, the town hall, at the elections. We made the hard copies available for people to, to fill out. Another thing to note is that the um, age breakdown is pretty representative of Waitley, and so when it's um, difficult to get numbers, it's important that the survey was generally representative, and I think we did achieve that um, with the uh, exception of renters. Okay. So having gone through the survey results, um, unless there's very specific questions we can move on um, to talking about the rest of the agenda items does anyone have any questions about the surveys that we need to answer now um all right so the next item i'm sorry i'm taking over your <laughs> Catherine, did you again i don't have the agenda up so someone's going to need to do it i have enough i had already things up and now i've got like the housing production plan and whatever yeah Okay. Too many tabs. So we sent out a very long section one and two um, draft sections of the plan. A lot has to go into those draft sections are required by the state. It's basically an overview of who lives in Waitley right now, what's the housing status, how, um, you know, what is the median housing value, what's their income, can they afford the housing, a real basic overview of the current demographics of both the town and the region. Um, and then also what is in town right now that may be constraining development, such as there is no sewer, their water lines are limited. These are think factors you're gonna have to work with in light of housing development. So it's kind of a snapshot of the town. Um, I don't wanna to go too much into the details today because I kind of want to focus on the next section that we need your input from. But if you have any questions, if you were able to enjoy those, 70 pages or so of reading at bedtime, <laughs> please let me know. I'd love to discuss it. Um, I do have it up, we can talk about it. Yes, I, I have a major concern of the population projections uh, for 2030 and I guess 2040, you're showing decreases in population 
and and even the the 2020 population i don't know where you got the figure of 1488 we're showing in town for i guess our planning board and other people are using a number of 1607 where we're showing a big increase in 2020 and you're showing a, a decrease i don't know where you're getting your number for 2020 and i don't know maybe brent can explain where planning board is getting their number i, I is that from the annual survey, census survey the town does? So that's a great question. And I saw the email traffic that was between, you know, you, me, and Judy, who's a senior member of the planning board. Uh, I, it was, it, it's news to me. I'd have to go back and ask Judy for more detail. Um, I, I don't know the origin. What she said in her email is that this was the result of research that she had done, I'd have to pull up the email, but it was related to her role on the Waitley Historical Commission. So I don't know. We can double history. check those numbers. So the twenty, the official twenty twenty census has not been released yet. Um, we they do have the raw numbers that are used for um, legislative information, but the twenty twenty annual census has the decennial census has not been released yet. So, so far, just the estimates have been. So we can double check. I think they're from to the, the latest 2019 estimates, um, but I'll check. The projections, projections are projections. So all of the projections for the last five, 10 years have been showing a gradual decrease in population of Franklin County. We do note that does not take into account, it just, they take the projection, like the current trends and then just project them out into the future. So that does not count for broadband being you know, installed now in all of Franklin County. It does not count for COVID and work from home. It does not account for passenger rail potentially coming for East Rail. You know, There's a lot of factors that it does not account for. Um, those are the numbers we've been working with um, and that we have available and that have been vetted. So I don't know if you have a, you know, if you really, we, we can put caveats in there, more caveats to show that these might go up, it might be a population increase, we just don't know. Yeah. But we'll definitely double check the 2020 numbers. Okay, and the other thing, uh, uh, popula related to population and the demographics, uh, there is some actual data, it, it appears through, through uh, I don't know exactly, 19, 2019, 2020, and then you make projections based on, the, on the, what the American Community Survey, which is a five-year estimate, so you take that five-year estimate and you and you put it at the end of actual data, and that estimate shows decreases for a lot of things in Waitley that don't fit the normal trend. You're, you're, to me, it seems you're, you're mixing the actual data with this five-year estimate that goes that was from 2016 to 2020, and you're trying to make projections based on that estimate when our actual data today for for them years doesn't agree with that estimate, but you continue with that. I, I mean, to me, that doesn't make sense. You're mixing actual with estimated. So even the decennial census is an estimate. They've changed the format of way they do it. So there is no actual, there's no actual count anymore for the census. They are, they always do these estimates in which they, they sample portions of the population. Um, and so from here on out, it's always gonna be an estimate and it takes kind of a, a five-year chunk and then samples the methodology. It's a whole different um, way of doing it these days. Um, so that is the way the data is and always will be from now on. Um, the projections were developed by the Donahue Institute that did not take into account the estimates. That actually was the whole big thing they do every five years, these projections um, that, that look at a whole bunch of different data factors um, beyond just the, the population. Okay, and the other comment I had on the, the breakdown of family types uh, in Whaley, there there is uh, three family and there is apartment units. You show don't show any. You're saying they don't exist. That's not true. There are there are two apartment units, and we have four three family units in Whaley. <laughs> Plus, there's about approximately ten other types of units. So you don't. Uh, I guess. Could you send us a list? I would love to have like the addresses or names or how many just exactly like if there's two apartment units, how many units approximately there are and how many 
um, two family units or what did you? Well, you, you can get that and you've got some of that information from the DOR report on uh, assessed properties. The LA4 has that summary of the type of properties. So I think Hannah can get that for you or, or get it from our uh, assessor in our office that will show you the breakdown of, of types of housing, residential housing uh, in Waitley. And the, the numbers don't necessarily agree. They're off a little, especially single family homes. Uh, we're showing 567 and, and you're showing some, I don't know, 660, I, I don't know. The numbers don't, don't agree. Uh, I think Hannah needs to, could check or suggest that Hannah check with our assessor to see how many we have in it. it it's on the DOR site on the LA4 every year. Okay, this is why I wanted you guys to review the draft. This is very helpful information. Thank you. I'm happy to loop Cynthia in. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Um, okay. So if you haven't had time to read sections one and two, feel free to do it at a later point um, and send me comments or questions or Hannah, I'd appreciate that. Does anyone else have any other questions, comments about sections one and two? Maybe I'll hold mine and submit them separately. Okay. I don't want to take any more time. Okay. All right. Um, so moving on to section three. So section three as required by the state is where we just took the snapshot of where we are now. Now we're looking forward in section three. What are we going to do to make recommendations regarding policy or zoning changes? to make housing more affordable and to make sure there's appropriate mix of housing for households. Um, and then where could that housing go? So we have these two types of recommendations. Um, and so I'd love to get ideas from you guys to discuss what's feasible, what's been tried, what do, what do you think is just a no-go that's not gonna work in town? Um, and then also potential sites. So as required by the state, we actually have to identify specific parcels, both, um, municipally owned private pro parcels, municipally owned parcels and private property, um, which is always interesting because it's a tricky area of, of do you wanna say, you know, I'm gonna sell Hannah's house. I think that'll be a great site for our apartment. You know, the people can get a little testy about that. So it's a little tricky. Usually what we do is if there's something already in the market, then we know that oh, people might be okay with selling that and maybe changing it. So we might suggest those sites. Um, and if there really is nothing, then that's fine. Um, but if there is some site that's, you know, say a, a nursery or, a, you know, a, a farm went for sale and it's not a very good, like a profitable, good soil, maybe that's a great place to put some housing or something, you know, I don't know. Um, but maybe there are some sites that the town would be open to, um, to developing. Um, but in particular, we definitely need some ideas for municipally owned parcels. So before I get into that though, let's talk about zoning and any potential policy changes that the town might wanna recommend. Um, so I went through the zoning and your subdivision bylaws. Um, I know that, let's see. So oh, one question for you is, and I don't know if you know off the top of your head, in the commercial district, is housing allowed like above commercial building, above like storefronts on second floors? Is it, it allowed? I mean, I don't know that we even have such things. Yeah. You know, it's not like Northampton where you have a store on the first floor. And as far as I know in town, I'm just starting to look through the table of use. Um, but it looks like I mean, it looks like residential uses. Um, so we have sort of two residential districts, the AR1 and AR2. So let's put those aside. Then we have commercial, commercial industrial, and industrial. So residential uses are not permitted at all in the commercial industrial and the industrial districts, full stop, not allowed, all right? The, we have some leeway in the commercial district because basically most of our commercial district runs along 510 in town. 
And so we have mixtures of residential. So single family detached dwellings are allowed by right in the commercial district. Pretty much most other things require a special permit in the commercial district. There are a couple of things where they're allowed by right because there's a special provision in the bylaws, like for open space cluster development. Okay, all right, so they potentially could be allowed. So there was my other question actually, it's like, so for example, two family, I believe anywhere in any of the zones require a special permit. Would, would the town be open to having at least two family be by right? That's a great question. And I don't, you know, uh, I don't really know what the answer is. I mean, coming into tonight's meeting, after looking, you know, reading the draft report so far, things that stuck out at me were, you know, two family and multifamily dwellings in town and um, accessory dwelling units. I mean, we have a, a provision for accessory apartments. Mm -hmm. But my sense, I mean, I can tell you if you wanted to know, maybe now is, is or is not the time, um, that I don't think there's a deep, you know, within the planning board, I don't think there are any really strong stakeholders for these things. I mean, and a lot like our accessory dwelling unit, the, the, those portions of our zoning bylaws, in my opinion, now I'm just speaking strictly as a relatively new member of the planning board, um, very arbitrary, um, you know, very seat of the pants kind of like, oh, we're gonna allow maximum of this. We had an interesting case where there was a homeowner who wanted to expand um, add an accessory apartment. Uh, this homeowner had a parcel on the boundary between Waitley and Hatfield. And what this property owner wanted to do was not permitted by Waitley's uh, ADU bylaw. Like, his, the square footage he needed to get to was like 200 square feet beyond what we allowed. But it was like two or 400 square feet below what Hatfield allows. Because these numbers are just like totally arbitrary. If you, again, I could almost rant about this. So I think there are, I think there are opportunities to improve how we zone for and encourage accessory dwelling units. I will tell you, I don't even know um, how much interest or demand there is in town. There have been a couple of cases of ADUs. I don't know that this is going to be a game changer. Uh, we definitely require that the, print, the landowner reside in either the accessory unit or the principal residence. Uh, you know, it seems like that's a niche kind of case, right? You know, people aging in place. Yeah. So anyway, I think there's a lot to say about what we could do to rationalize our ADU zoning, maybe with good advice about how it's done elsewhere. And, you know, also the planning board tends to take the perspective that, um, you know, Waitley is the one and only Waitley. We don't really need to know much about how other towns do things or even learn from how other, because, you know, we're Waitley. Um, but like we have these cases where, well, why would it, why would Waitley do it this way? And just right across the border, they do it altogether differently. Then the air, other area is multifamily and, and two family, right? I just, it, I don't know if there is, would be a reservoir of opposition in town to, I mean, multifamily could be sensitive. I don't know, you know, because people suddenly are like, oh my God, they're going to build a huge apartment complex and suddenly there's going to be traffic and God only knows where one could possibly cite such a multifamily unit. I could imagine um, the planning board being open to at least exploring changes relative to two family units. But again, we have these, we, these minimums, right? I mean, it gets to lot coverage, like we have a maximum 30% lot cover, um, which, you know, again, where does, where does this number come from? I get the idea that you wanna 
have, you know, tidy little houses surrounded by lovely large tracts of rural land. Um, but to do some of these things would require um, adjusting those kinds of, uh, or making exceptions for those kinds of setbacks and frontages and, and lot coverage in particular. And then we have this issue about with or without public water, right? Everyone's very concerned about, as you mentioned in your report, about use of, of resources like, like water. So I've rambled on, I'm gonna stop right there. The, 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 what is, we're seeing is not only Waitley, but other towns, that the prices of building lots is, is, keeps increasing significantly. You know, we're here in the 95 to 150 range for building lots. You're not going to get, which kind of, I think, prevents maybe some people from looking to, to build in Whateley because of the cost of land. And part of that, I think, goes back to, to the zoning, which specifies a certain size of, of building lot. It's either 40,000 square feet or 60,000 square right. feet. That's, that's an acre size building lot. You don't need an acre size building lot. I'm on an acre size lot and I don't know what to do with the half of the acre. The, the either kill weeds or, or you let farmers farm it. I mean, people moving in town don't want that much land. And, and of course, you know, maybe the, the zoning uh, can change where the frontage can stay the same, where you can get the, the distance from neighboring houses, but the back of the lot doesn't have to be 250 feet, maybe it's some other measure that's less than a 40,000 square feet. And maybe the price of the lot will go down if it's half the size, maybe not, I, I, I don't know. But you may get more people looking at single family homes that way, if they can more afford afford the lot, to purchase the lot. Right, uh, I like where Fred is going with that. You know, that's, I think that's very true that I think we're, Waitley is built to, make people have big lots. Yes. And is that because of go, septic? If you go, if you go back, I, I just ran across this by accident. You go back and looking at, at other town meetings, uh, prior town meetings, oh, 20, 25 years ago, the size of lots in Waitley were 80,000 square feet. Really? That was a two acre size lot. And there was a big discussion for several years of reducing the size of the lot. And it came down to what we have today to 40,000 square feet. There was a lot of concern then. It was a close vote then. And I think reducing the size today is going to be the same thing. It's going to be a major issue for a lot of people in town. Huh. Uh, do, you, are, do you see that, Fred? I, I love this. You know, Fred goes back in town way more than I do. Yeah. Do you see it as like so controversial that it's kind of like a third rail we shouldn't touch or? or it could be socialized and we might find that reducing lot sizes um, in the AR1 district, for example, could, could have a constituency. I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, developers may like it, but I'm not sure what farmers may not like it though, because they're not selling as many lots. Well, it, it depends. And it may promote more subdivisions. If you have smaller lots, right? Maybe you can afford more subdivisions that would require less land. I, I, I don't know. I almost wonder if it wouldn't be easier to try the two family housing by right and not change the lot size, in, at least in the short term. Um, I, I can't say that I can speak for what the rest of the community would say, but knowing the kinds of things that have gotten people riled in the past and, and reflecting back on what Fred just said, if 25 years ago, despite that feeling like quite a while, it in some ways in Whaley, it's not, it could be still true that people feel really attached to the larger parcel related to being a, identifying as a farming community as, as opposed to identifying as a community trying to exclude other people who can't afford an acre, right? Like it, it, I just, I wonder if a two family by right would, would slide through town easier. That would just be my place to, to maybe take that conversation. And I think that changing the size could be complicated and it might raise a lot. It, it would require a lot longer 
So just going on that point, Catherine, that what I don't know, not being a developer, is let's suppose we just could allow two family um, residences by right in AR1, and probably that's all we would need to do, right? What I don't know, and I don't know if anyone on this meeting that knows is, could you build a feasible two family unit given the existing set of dimensional requirements? You could, but not using affordable housing funding, really. Like a, a person who might want to do that to live in one side and rent out the other um, could probably build a big enough building on a lot with the 30% and the 40,000 square feet, all that taken into consideration. I think that would be possible on an acre lot, mm-hmm. no problem. But the, I th- the problem, I, I what I think is either way, because there are only what, like five to 10 housing starts in Waitley a year, the odds that that's gonna generate anything that increases in any meaningful way are, I mean, it may do a very tiny shift over time to increase our affordable or or our rental units, but I don't think it will make any meaningful shift towards any affordable um, housing. So like like that's sort of balancing the amount of effort we're gonna put into the bang for a buck that we might actually get at the end of such a change. I think it would make a small change in rental housing in and honestly, I think even that's an improvement to the mix that we have now. We don't have any real mix. I think the 16% rental housing is over, very overstated. I mean, Would, anyway. Wouldn't, um, I, I have mixed feelings about the, um, you know, the required lot size, because I understand we, we want to protect open space and Waitley's beautiful the way it is. And I, I hate to see, you know, ugly buildings built on farmland. Um, but but I feel like the requirement um, is just also just a recipe for sprawl. Like we're, we're going to fill the whole town with these um, with these big lots with one house on them. And and um, I don't have any expertise in this area, but wouldn't it make more sense to pick up an area in town and do cluster development there and I just feel like that would be more acceptable to people than than um, putting um, multifamily homes or two family homes um, dotted throughout town. So, and, to, and then it could be it could be developed in a um, cohesive, attractive way, instead of throwing them all over the place in the middle of our fields. So, can you all see my screen? I'm sharing. Yes. Um, yes. So I did put together a little analysis based on that. So um, what I did was put the prime farmland soils, which is kind of these brown olive oil, olive um, colors uh, on top of the zoning. And then the green is the um, permanently protected lands. So you can kind of see where in potentially these tan areas, um, they're not prime farmland soils. There is no major um, Although there might be wetlands, I did not put the wetlands on there, um, but I did put floodplains. But that's another factor we'll have to check. But yeah, kind of, wetland would be super important. Yes, no, and I should have put that on there. I did, I did not yet. But um, it's basically going through all laying all those layers on top, wetlands, crime farm oils. What are you left? Um, and maybe those could potentially be new zones that have could be an AR one point five, in which has that reduced lot size um, that you could only do cluster divisions in type of thing. Maybe maybe we look at it in a different way rather than just kind of doing what we were talking about, reduce cutting the lot size in half across the town um, and having that kind of sprawl feel. Um, there are other ways of, of doing it and approaching it with different strategies. Um, so that's a, it's a thought. Um, we'd have to think about, you know, looking at this map, you know, you guys know the lay of the land, what's there, what's not, what will be some good areas to maybe target and have new neighborhood subdivisions that are clustered, that preserve open space, something to think about. We don't have to answer it now. I can I can email this map to you guys and you guys can look at it, kind of draw a line and think about it. Or if you have any um, thoughts right now, we can talk about it. Um, I mean, just a kind of a quick reaction. Don't, shouldn't we, when we think about where these kinds of units 
Well, let me ask it this way. Should we think about any place in town as equally as good as any other, or should we be really focusing our attention as we search for candidate locations at you know, places that are like near major thoroughfares, like in the you know, northeast corner of Waitley near State Road and 116, you know, because building, you know, some affordable uh, housing unit, like way up in the hills up in wait, you know, on Haydenville near Williamsburg puts people way the hell away from so many things and public transportation and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that is definitely a factor that should be considered. Um, you know, along five and 10, you know, the zoning for commercial does allow some residential, as you said, um, the AR1s along five and 10 are potentials, you know, up, like you said, in this corner, up by 116 and five and 10, that might be an area that is definitely accessible to transit um, in different ways of getting around. Maybe, maybe something up there would be best. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is any undeveloped parcels left, I don't know, but things to think about and consider as we move forward in this plan. Well, one, one area that we keep talking about, well, some people do that, and we talk to the landowners some, but hasn't gone too far is on uh, the southern part of, of State Road, well, off of LaSalle Drive. There's some wow. vacant parcels there. Uh, that existing houses are there in very, very, very poor shape that uh, it faces it, kind of 90, uh, 91. And uh, if you no see, zoom in on Claverack, Megan, sorry to talk over yeah. you, Fred. No, it's because it's on LaSalle Road, if you zoom up a little bit. Cell Road, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the middle. Uh, right, uh, let's see here. Uh, there's so Claverack. Road. Claverack's here and and so, gosh, I can't point for you. I, <laughs> Sorry. If you take Claverack Road from Chestnut Plain heading out to five and 10, the uh -huh. very tiny lines that are clustered right yeah. by five and 10, uh -huh. uh, LaSalle Road is one of those. Okay. And there is a home there. It's also, we'd have to overlay the wetlands and the water, the aquifer protection mm -hmm. stuff to here. But that is a, a strip of land that I, because it's on uh, one of my regular walking routes, I've sort of seen and identified for a long time as a place where it's low traffic, it's close to five and 10, like it hits a couple of these things. There's not currently public transportation, but if in fact we met some of the requirements around the aquifer and the water protection, you could cluster some small senior duplexes close to the road, there might be enough space to have a small um, community room maybe adjacent to a duplex or something and so it would make like a very nice quiet because it's a dead end road away from it all place but it is very close to the highway so that noise or that may be an issue um it's privately owned right now it's it's owned it by multiple yes multiply mul multiply owned privately yeah okay yeah it it is it is it does face well, abuts or whatever, 91, but I, I think with uh, building construction, uh, you can mitigate a lot of the noise from traffic right. there. And, and 91 is, I think it's pretty level through there. So you're not getting- It is of, level. A lot yeah. of truck noise going uphill or downhill, so okay. yeah. So um, this I, makes me, this gives me, I have a sort of reaction and a sort of a question back to our FERCOG planning team. So how do we, sort of avoid, you know, wishful thinking. I think we could all say, wouldn't it be great if we could just have, you know, what we, this nice affordable unit, you know, there. Um, but we, you know, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna build that stuff. Like, and I've been even thinking as I've reflected on our existing zoning bylaws, you know, we, our zoning bylaws, at least have explicit provisions for multifamily units. They have explicit provisions for accessory apartments. But as you pointed out, there's virtually no multifamily units in town. So at some point, the planning board in the town went through the effort 
driven perhaps by wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be great if we had more, you know, we encouraged multifamily housing in Waitley. Let's go through all this rigmarole in a vote in town meeting, get this into our zoning bylaws. Somebody wished that that would happen, but nothing happened. <laughs> And that's kind of the, the button that I'm trying to push it because I like what Catherine's saying. Hey, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could make these things happen? But how? I can give a quick um, overview of that grant. I think that it, the town is going to have to become an active player for that to happen. No small towns in Massachusetts usually look like places that a developer will want to come and build affordable housing unless, because the land is expensive, the resources aren't here for um, water and sewer, obviously no sewer and it's a small, uh, well, only part of town is accessible for town water, right? So uh, it's not a very desirable place for anyone to do any kind of development where they would um, be able to, to make money. It really requires affordable housing, requires a good amount of state subsidy usually, and there are a number of multi, number of nonprofit agencies throughout the state who support towns in proactively trying to bring housing to their towns. Mm -hmm. um, Franklin County has been at a large disadvantage because, well, for two real reasons. All the most of the towns in Franklin County are really small, and the smaller the town, the, the less desirable they are. Because you you know if you're a nonprofit developer and you're a for-profit person, you want to develop huge scale and a, an 80 unit development for apartments in lots of five family structures or whatever here is just doesn't work anywhere in Franklin County probably. So um, the only real developer in, in Western, in Franklin County is, has had a lot of, um, issues over the last say 10 years and is working on writing itself and getting ready to get back into the development of housing. But Franklin County's really not had too many nonprofits that are able to help and guide. So I think there's been a stall for quite a while of that type of housing. I'm really familiar with the funding programs for all of those sources um, through the state of Massachusetts. What I think is that it's a lot harder when you can't build more than 20 units because a project won't be eligible for tax credits. So we may be able to direct a small eight unit or 12 unit project here, but it will take a number of years of work mm -hmm. and writing and probably multiple consultants and years of work with the nonprofit agency to support us. That, that's what I think is the answer, but it's not gonna happen just sitting here okay. and talking about it. I don't think that, and, no matter what we did to the zoning. Good. Well, that's sort of so where I was going then would be to say then we whatever we sort of converge on shouldn't be about if we zone it, they will build. That's right. That's right. I think that 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 can ease a little, right? Because if oh, we get one yeah, person yeah. who wants to move into town every year for the next five years and build a two family and you know rent out half of it. I think that's great. That's like five other available units that we didn't have to put all this work in for. So that would be great. That's why like that example, I think could be helpful, but I think on a scale, it would be a still, a, it would re produce a small result, which is why I was sort of thinking about that, like mm -hmm. the zoning changes, maybe not necessarily being the biggest point of the thrust, although that contradicts a little bit, maybe with the purpose of Megan's like wanting to talk about housing production plan, you know, I, I don't know if our committee has had enough discussions or if we've really talked about town enough that other than the obvious things, like Waitley has a very small corridor where there's any access to public transportation. Right. I mean, we could put some language in there that says, of course, for affordable housing, we know we would love to target somewhere where there's affordable transportation and public water. However, the parcels in that region are, are limited. I mean that, right. yeah. So one thing that popped out at me as I was going through everything is just the lack of, of sewer. That is like, to me, the major, major limiting factor to affordable housing. And then when I was, so I went back through um, and 
it, it looks like all of the zoning requires basically septic systems up to 1500 gallons. So just a standard single family septic system, unless you're on the open space cluster subdivision, then you're allowed to do a community septic system if it's been engineered and approved. Um, I'm wondering if there is appetite in town to be more flexible with the community septic systems in other regards, like in terms of two family, multifamily, because even the multifamily, I think I can't remember, I was reading it today, requires um, like a 1500 gallon septic system, although they did say you could use multiple ones to get to the level you need, which I thought was worded very strangely, maybe cleaning that type of language up. To allow yeah, that sounds like it could use generally a little clarification yeah. for sure because that right um, a 1500 tank is only up to three bedroom i forget how that works actually i forget the um yeah if you were going to build two three bedroom it would seem odd to build perk and separately yeah, it says multi you highlighted no septic system serving the project shall exceed 1500 gallons per day sewage flow but more than one septic system may serve the site. Um, it just seems kind of clunky rather than doing um, like the new languages for, for the open space cluster division does allow community septic systems. So maybe there, that could be another room for change. You know, a developer sees that and goes, oh, that's just, you know, forget it, forget Waitley, Look, what's the next town over, um, maybe. It's probably true for new, new construction, new building, but I'm sure there's existing properties that, uh, have more than, than one uh, family living in them that have the one septic system. Uh, just, just for information, information purposes, and then I want to make another point. Uh, in Waitley, there, is, there, there are two family homes, two family residents now. There is approximately 28 two family residents and four three family residents. So it's not like we don't have any and we're trying to create something new. They do exist. There may be not. Right. As obvious, I'm exaggerating by the amount. We have a very low percent, right? right? They're not maybe as obvious as you would see, a, 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 say, like a duplex or something with side by side units, but they, they yeah. do. We they still do have less than 5%. So that's a pretty small amount of yeah. rental housing. Right. But they, but they do exist. So it's not a stranger to, to many people. And, and the other thing, you know, we. We have a, a property without getting into details of, of where it is or who the developer is. We have a property in town, uh, two or three acre size parcel that was sold to a developer that's having, that I guess made kind of tentative commitments to put uh, 10 apartment units in an existing building and add another 10 on a parcel next to it. This, this happened oh, three, four years ago, and that developer is having difficulty, I guess, securing financing or getting tax credits or, or, or whatever. Uh, I, I think that, that the, the town should, or even, even FERCOG, get involved in trying to maybe coordinate or, or, call it, or assist that developer to try to get something going on that property. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's the regulations and funding, or just the developer's own uh, financial interests that, or whatever that that are, are the holdup. But but this is uh, it's becoming kind of an eyesore because the property is sitting vacant, and people keep wondering, well, is it going to be developed or not? Because we had presentations on what it would look like: ten units plus another ten, and I think people have kind of accepted that. It wasn't sold by the town. Well, part of it was people kind of accepted that location and, and them units. So, you know, if we want to increase housing, there's 20 units that, uh, you know, could benefit the, the, the town if, if something happened to them. Sorry, I missed the beginning, Fred. Uh, where are you talking about? I don't want to be real specific right now because uh, it's in town. There is a, there is, uh, two or it's three a own parcel. private owner, yeah. Private, owner, it's property. private ownership now. It was, it was public ownership, uh, both the re regional and town ownership, and it, it turned over and it sold to a developer. And he made commitment. Well, he, I don't say commitment, but nothing in writing, no deed restrictions, no time period periods, no schedule, anything. But he made mm -hmm. the verbal commitment that. Uh, he would develop this property. And that's what the them agencies kind of uh, agreed to, to sell it to him. 
they got it at a very reasonable price and it's been sitting there for, I don't know, three, four or five years maybe. Uh, and we don't know if anything's ever gonna be done, but I think that's a great opportunity. If we wanna increase housing in Whaley, right there it is. People agree, people know it. They know the site and it came up at town meetings and, and other meetings, planning board probably had a, had a voice in it before it was sold, but nothing has happened. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, I know it's 7.30. I don't want to keep you guys too late uh, for this evening. Are there any other on your wish list of things you would like to see happen in town in terms of changes or things that we definitely should not be touching? One of the, I will say one of the suggestions um, from a lot of other plans that we've done is, um, and especially because you guys have a CPA, which actually makes this really feasible, is a first time home um, buyers program is providing them funding to do that. I don't know what the status have you, of that is. Have, have you ever done the numbers for our town? How it would, how much of a sub, so one subsidy would have to be oftentimes 200,000 or more okay. to make it an affordable home. And based on the small amount of housing funds we get every year, like in the fifteen to sixteen thousand dollar range, that feels a little bit like biting off more than. I would love to build a housing development of small, less than two hundred thousand dollar priced homes in town, specifically for first time homebuyers, and use CPA to subsidize the cost for a developer to do that. But I don't know what how that would go. And I'd wear, I don't have any idea where that would go either. <laughs> well, the housing committee has kind of reached out to, they call it, and Catherine, you correct me, what the Habitat for Humanity and one other developer on developing, I didn't call it spot housing, if you want to call it that, at certain parcels. And, and they kind of weren't interested because the land needed some, some uh, site costs improvements or but before they could. They could do anything and we were like number 82 on their list so it would take years for them to even get down to us to do uh, a power so yeah one, one unit ha habitat has already got a nice queue built for themselves and they only build three or four houses a year so it takes a really long time i'm not saying that's not a great if we had a great parcel to get into a, that kind of a queue but what, what what we thought would be a reasonable parcel for our town was was rejected by Habitat and because of the amount of site work needed. Um, so I, I think we have a lot of obstacles to producing housing in our town, a lot. And I think it will come out that there's probably a really narrow amount of places that we could cl cluster anything that looks like apartments, really, unless magically, I hate, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure I would speak in favor of any of our farmland being, it's hard for me to even think that because I don't think we have enough of that preserved either. So it's hard for me to think where possibly we could end up doing something like that, um, that would be affordable. But I think we have a uphill battle in this town. It's not different than lots of small rural Western Massachusetts towns, I suppose. No. Very There's very one fun. one place in town that I almost don't even want to mention it because I think I could see there being an uproar, but I'll go ahead and say it. What the hell? The Tri Town Beach. Now I've been there, and I think you know my my own inclination is that for the town to really make it a worthwhile, a really meaningful town resource, it would need a lot of investment. Because having just been there this past summer. It's very sad. It's very sad. I mean, I wanted to not be sad. I really wanted to, you know, enjoy swimming with the geese, but it's very sad. So, but on the other, I mean, there's this big, then there's this land parcel. There's, I think there's a floodplain issue, but it's in a way it's located so nicely right by the intersection of 510 and 116 that if we could just basically say, somebody, you know, you get a free lake. <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm gonna say. 
Um, Brant, thank you for bringing that up. That's part of our Complete Neighborhoods grant project. Um, we're doing a potential study of that area, um, getting some technical assistance to look at that for development. Okay. Does that have Good. to work as so close to the um, industrial park? Could you say the first half of that again? Does it, have, does it have sewer lines? It doesn't, does it? I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. That's a good site to potentially examine. And a lot, so I will say some of the recommendations in our plan does not say have to, does not have to say we we recommend revising, you know, the AR from 40,000 to 20,000. We could say examine the feasibility of right. So it, it, there's ways to soften it and provide yeah. recommendations for change. And there's also you can also word things and make things um, you know, presented. Say there's a crazy idea that you would like to just start seeding over the next 20 years. You can say, you know, examine the potential feasibility in many years, and this is a low priority, but at least it's out there for a conversation to start in the town. So there's ways of, of wording things. Um, so you, not necessarily, these are things we want to do right away, but you can also look really long term and say, eventually, maybe this would be a great idea. Maybe we should start kind of getting the, the temperature on that. Um, all right. Any other major ideas we should think about or not touch? I have a quick question. Quick, I don't know. Um, in something we've read, in something I read, um, said that there's the water district is thinking, and um, I might be confusing. I know you have a water district and a water something else. So whichever one is just taken over the, the, the majority of the system, um, that there's tentative proposal to extend along Egypt Road. Um, what should we know about that for the plan and how it might influence the generating new possibilities? Well, um, there is water on Egypt Road. Um, yeah. Most of it, I, I think, is as water uh, accessible. Uh, the project is to go under the railroad tracks and connect it on the other side to get a better flow through the system. So yeah. you're not going to, you may have a few vacant parcels that would benefit, but most of them on Egypt Road have, have water already. I can speak to that too. Um, we just submitted in this most recent grant round a complete, uh, sorry, a one stop for growth grant application to complete the water main loop on Egypt Road. Um, like Fred said, it goes underneath the railroad tracks and that'll benefit all of the residential properties that are on that loop. I thought the big impediment there was, you know, it has to run under the tracks. It's a major construction project. You need approvals from the, you know, the, the whoever has the easement or the right of way on the freight. And it's, it. I, I had the impression like, this was one of those almost shoot the moon kind of projects. Am I wrong about that? Um, yeah, I think the permitting does um, pose a relatively significant roadblock, um, but it, it's something that we're still exploring. Um, I, I have a question. I don't know if this is a taboo subject, or if anybody knows anything about it, but I'm wondering about the blue school. Is that being used right now on the corner of, um, is that Depot Road and River Road? Christian Lane and River Road. No, I don't think there's any activity. As, it's as, a, far as use to it's a spot coming. close to, it's close to five and 10. It's an existing building. It's owned by the town. It's not owned by the town oh, it's anymore. Not owned by it's the privately town. owned. It's privately owned. Maybe that's the area Fred was talking about. I don't know. Okay. No comment. Okay. What about the center school, the old, the old center school? That. No. Okay. It's so. No. There's it's a... in bad shape. I mean. We looked at a housing committee. It, we at... we. Yeah. I, I the amount of money that it would cost to renovate that building for housing that could pass. DHCD type inspection, it's not, it would be three times more expensive than building something. I mean, there's asbestos down there. There's all kinds of stuff in the basement. 
Is that parcel big enough for other additional buildings? No. That would be a hard sell. Okay. It's a historic building. So I'm assuming that the building- Right, and it's part of Waitley's beautiful yeah. town center. I think there'd be a lot of resistance, including from me. Yeah, it, it, that's gonna be another a tricky building for a positive reuse. I, I hope something comes of that, but I know there's been a lot of talking about it. It's just, unfortunately, I think it's gonna be an expensive endeavor no matter what. Um, all right, uh, Tamsin, I think you had a couple questions that you wanted to ask to fill in for sections one and two maybe. Yeah, I'd love to ask about um, the Smike's house again. Um, Hannah and Catherine had um, talked to our colleague, Andrea Donlin, that saying that the, I saw a note from Andrea saying that the affordability clause on the Smike's house might have run out. It was renewed, I thought. Okay. Fred, do you remember any, can you, we renewed a lease, the, the lease with them. Well, I'm, I'm not sure we actually renewed or renewed by default. Right. It's, yeah, we were talking about, about, the, we, about the rent fees that they were charging and all that's that. That's right. And we went back and forth with some really small changes. Brian actually managed that, I suppose, right? Well, some. We got into some, and then I think COVID started, so we nothing really happened mm. after that. I do think the terms of the lease, Mingan, were it, it it's were to re, that the affordability would would renew in perpetuity every. I forget if it's a ten or fifteen or twenty year. The, um, the HRA manages it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can so we can probably get answers from them as well. Yeah. Okay, I have some zoning questions that I think I'll save for a, a different time. But so then my last question is, um, does anyone here remember why the program offering home improvement loans to residents for housing and septic issues through, um, I think it was a CDBG grant run through the Franklin County Regional HRA, why that stopped running in 2012? I don't think that Waitley, Waitley's numbers in the CDF for the scoring got less good because we're a more wealthy town than most of the other communities. And I think at that time, Franklin County Housing and Redevelopment Authority was having the beginning of some trouble. They have to sort of turn, they have to pivot through all the Franklin County communities. Waitley was less competitive. When we started talking about this to them, or around that time or a little earlier, they consistently said we didn't have a waiting list and they weren't getting Waitley people to respond to their outreach. Um, and so I think around that time, also the select board didn't adopt a housing section of the master plan. I don't know if that like had anything to do with it, but I think Franklin County just hasn't kind of come back around and I'm not, Fred at one point actually kind of did a list of a, a number of homes he thought would potentially have um, interest in that kind of a program. So I think it'd be worth reconnecting with their CDBG staff for the writing and, and to see what they've got. If we haven't been in the rehab grant in the many years, it would be good to hop back on. Um, oh, one last potentially controversial question. Uh, in your subdivision um, regs is the growth control bylaw with two building permits per year, limiting it to 12, 10 building permits per year. Right now, you're probably not getting close to that or about that. Is there any appetite for loosening that in, if, in case there is more of a demand? Um, think about it, mull it over, get back to us next meeting maybe, or let me know. <laughs> That's something maybe to put down and have a discussion about, I wonder, at a couple different meetings. I don't know where that came from. I know that, that that's been around as long as I've been here and yeah, it wouldn't be bad to. 
My sense is a lot of towns put that in around the 2000s when there seemed to be a population growth. Um, and then since then, I don't think it's ever really been needed by any of the towns around right. Franklin County. <laughs> sure. And we got this, you know, feedback to our survey that some people in town feel like we're building too many houses and letting too many people move in. So those people will be opposed to raising this gap. Sure, you're right. You're right. If that's true, I, it's so hard for me to think. I mean, unless they happen to live like on Long Plain Road near the one. Yeah, I don't, I just, I don't know. My neighbor on here on in Pine Plains. They're like, <laughs> we're right, open. maybe to think <laughs> like, gosh, there's a house going up. Right. Like I, I can only think of two. I'm having, I, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I'll think about that some more. Um, I think I have all of my major questions answered. I, what the next steps are is I feel like I have a good feeling of what might be feasible, what not be feasible. We're going to go through and start kind of drafting different options, choices, potentially prioritizing um, and then we'll come back at our next meeting, which I think might be December, or January. Um, and then we'll, I want to get your feedback on that. Is you know, is this appropriate? No, strike that, or let's move that up higher. Let's really lean into this one. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any thoughts or ideas, please send them to either Hannah or I, um, not to the whole committee because that would be a violation of open meeting law, but. <laughs> Um, just to individually, I'm happy to incorporate them into um, the potential the draft that we will then be working on. Can I ask a procedure question for Please. once you get over that hump? Is there typically, um, are there any public meetings to discuss the housing yeah. practice before yep. they make it through the approvals? Yeah. Yeah. So that's up to you guys. So usually what we do is we have a pub, we, we draft the plan. Um, based on your feedback, based on the input from surveys. And we kind of come up with this draft plan with draft recommendations. And then we take that to a public meeting, um, get the feedback from that, revise as needed, and then go to the planning board and select board for their approvals. Um, but if you, we want to, it doesn't have to be done that way. We could have several public meetings. We could have you know one big one at the end. We could, it's up to you guys, how you think your town works best. All right. Well, it's good at least now to have it in the back of the head. Yeah. And so we, the funding for this and the plan needs to be completed by June, um, the end of June. So we do have a while. Um, and there is only this one last section to, to draft. So we have the, it's three sections. That's it for this plan. So it's short. You know, it'll be end up being over 100 pages, but um, we're almost there. So really for the next six months, we can focus on what are the appropriate recommendations to make and strategies to, to, to recommend. Okay. And I just missed this part. Are you it it just needs select board and planning board approval or is it voted at town meeting? No, it's it's um I mean if you want to go to town meeting you can, but it only to have an approved housing plan, you just select board and planning board approval. Okay. Is it possible? I don't know that it's gonna be a lengthy document to kind of summarize it in, in one or two pages so people could get a quick view of it because not many are going to read the 100 pages. Uh, it, it's a bigger task to reduce it to two pages than to write it at 100. So yep, that yeah, line, we do an executive summary and at the public meetings, we will do that as well. And you can do PowerPoints and really just pull out the recommendations. Um, yes, definitely. So, and I'm sorry to just keep going on on these procedural questions that Catherine raised. So is it then does it become like now I put on my planning board hat, this lands on the planning board, we discuss it. Is it an up or down approve, disapprove vote? Or does the, you know, do these, can they, can, would the boards be able to, you know, recommend changes or I'm curious about that part of it? There is nothing in the, in the state requirements. Let's see, I have them here that it does not have to be an up or down vote. I think as long as both boards approve the same version, then it's fine. So they could say, you know, I really don't like this one. Let's strike this. And as long as the other board's okay with that, then I think it's fine. As long as we, the, the final thing is that the plan needs to be submitted to the state with a letter from the planning board and select board saying we approve these. I don't think the state cares how you got to that letter. Okay. Does that make us 
eligible for special funding? It, um, what it does is it protects you from Chapter 40B um, developers from coming in and imposing what they, so because your town does not have 10% affordable housing, you're under that threshold. What could happen is a developer could say, I wanna put a subdivision here. And because you're under that 10%, you have no ability to say no to that. By having this plan, you can say, well, hold on, that's maybe not the right place, or maybe we need to change it. Or we could say, no, that you I don't want that. Because you have a plan to create affordable housing, you have that ability to control and say no to Chapter 40B housing developers. Um, and you also could get points in grant applications as well. Just a caveat though, you have to be working, you have to show over time okay. that you're working towards development. Yeah. Yeah. Having a plan isn't sufficient. Wave it around and say, leave us alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I would love to have a meeting maybe in December. I know December gets a little crazy. So if it's too crazy, we could move it to January. But in the meantime, um, we'll be drafting section three. And I would love to have um, your input at that time on those recommendations. And also in the meantime, if you haven't gotten to sections one and two and you have any comments, please send them to either Hannah or I. Um, and then if you have any ideas for sites, policy changes, also, please send them to us to incorporate. Corporate. Um, see, did I forget anything else? You will look at the population projections again. Yes, I have that written down. That has a star yeah. next to it. Don't worry, Fred, I'll get to it. Because um, I think that, that could be a sticking issue with some people in town. We don't want to see population decrease. If you're proposing something and showing that, they may get negative on, on that, saying you don't realize what's going on. Oh. That's and gonna be tricky because the po population projections, we don't necessarily create them. The Donahue Institute, UMass, and, and actually MassDOT does a lot of the projections. And even the latest ones, I mean, they all show either population stabilization or a slight decline. Um, and what we can do is put language that caveats that, well, these don't take into account, you know, that Boston's going to flood with the next hurricane and everyone's going to move west. You know, they don't take that into account. Um, but the actual, it's going to be hard for us to change those numbers. Okay. But I think you may want to somewhere recognize that since 2020, which is mostly your data focuses on, there's been major increases in town. We've got the two, well, two areas that have lots of housing. One is where Brent is, Pine Plains Estates. There's probably well, there's 41 houses there that are, well, maybe half of them were in 21 and 20, 20 and 21. And then there's another area, Masterson Road, that's probably got, I don't know, five or eight new houses on it. Then were the two areas we see the most development in now. And maybe somehow you could, you could mention there is increased housing in, in town in these areas, will it continue or not? I, I, I don't know, uh, you know, the Pine Plains State is all filled up. It's all, to my knowledge, it's all sold, all developed. So uh, it, maybe that's uh, something, a future recommendation. Do we want to see something like that somewhere else in town? But these are not necessarily affordable housing units in either Masterson or right. Pine Plains. Yeah. They're just right. making the problem worse. Well, it could be. A, Okay. All right. I think I think I have everything I needed for tonight. Does everyone else have any other last comments? Okay. Thank you so much for sticking with us until eight o'clock. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Thank you, Megan. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. There wasn't anything else after that on the agenda, right, Hannah? I literally never pulled it up after the last time I said I didn't have it. I just let it be. Nope. We discussed right. everything we needed to discuss. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess we will do some Google polling or whatever about a next meeting and we can move to adjourn 756. Okay.